Hello and welcome into room 442. Sarah Peraria joined with Michael Singh and we're talking some TFC. TFC in action over the weekend against San Jose traveling to California. Nil, nil draw. Another draw in the books for TFC, Mikey. <laughs> Am I... Am I a psycho for enjoying that game, Sarah? <gasps> yeah, you are. You absolutely <laughs> it are. It was an I exciting was nil-nil draw. Um, it was not, but <laughs> I mean, I think the second half had a little bit more excitement. The end of that game, I, I thought GFC were going to lose it. Yeah. There were so many chances. Uh, that like last ten minutes, I was here for, but I was the first half was dreadful. I found I I was not excited. Both sides though, not just TFC. Yeah, no, it's a good thing that TFC don't have another trip to the West Coast because I'm not loving 10:30 those ten thirty kickoffs oh. after a Canada game too. That wasn't yeah. the most exciting. No. It was it was a grind. It was. I mean, we're so used to playing like watching. Sorry, football in the mornings too right because yeah. we're usually watching like and the i don't know tsc usually 7 30 so you're like all right by 9 30 i'm done watching for the day 10 30 even with like nba i find i struggle west coast not for me in the sense of time so. but weather but the weather, weather. yeah yeah <laughs> let's make that clear <laughs> um oh yeah what do you take away from that game yeah i, I you know i thought given the fact that TFC, we talked about it all week leading up to the match, the fact that they were going to be missing so many players, so uh, many. it was going to be a challenge for the team. But I actually thought the way that they played overall, you could see moments and ideas that the team has been working on and implementing. You saw that translate onto the pitch, even though they were missing so many players. So I thought overall the performance as a whole um, was actually one of their better performances, just in the sense that they played the game that they wanted to play. Yeah. Which, of course, is, you know, keeping possession, some quick ball movement. We saw, you know, Jaquil Marshall Ruddy come in and he seemed to fit in pretty seamlessly. Same with Alonzo Coelho. Mm -hmm. He seemed to sit in, fit in pretty seamlessly. So the fact that you can plug and play pieces now actually shows that there is a system that is coming along. So it, it, for me, it's it's a sign that the team is moving in a right in the right direction. And of course, TFC extend, you know, their unbeaten run here to four, which you know not many wins over that span but if you're you know you're not conceding you're not losing games at least a positive especially the way that this beginning of the season goes Bob Bradley's talked about it the cold weather everything else that comes into effect the start of year is for MLS teams especially cold weather teams it, it is tougher mm -hmm. so the fact that TFC now are four games unbeaten could have been five <coughs> it's a decent start to the season overall yeah, I mean, listen, I usually, I'm quite honest about TFC, and I'll hammer them if I need to, but this match in particular, it was, it was tough. They mm -hmm. really had no guys to call up on. They had injuries, then we obviously know the four guys traveling with Canada. It was, it was tricky for Bob Bradley, I'll give him that. But yeah, the one thing I'll take away is Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy, mm -hmm. actually, I thought was one of the best players on the pitch. He had his first start for TFC now, and... Yeah. First I mean, start this year, yeah. This year, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you know that that's always tricky because you know you can't really tell how confident the player is. Mm -hmm. How do they play with the players on the pitch? This is obviously such a rotated side, but that was one really good takeaway. I think is that he looked really confident and really good, and I think it's good for Bob Bradley to see that to also say, "All right, listen, we got this guy here now. If we need him, we can use him." Yeah, that's definitely a valuable asset. Before we, we dive into Jaquil, though, let's just hear what Bob Bradley had to say about the match overall. There were positives for sure. Uh, I thought that the mentality for the game, uh, opportunities for different players to get on the field, uh, overall way of defending. I thought we had moments where our ability to play through the midfield, control the game. I thought those things in some moments were quite good. Uh the reminder at the end to the, the group was that there's all those positives, but we should also feel like the next time we're in that game, uh, if we're a little bit sharper, there's three points for us. Um, so I think that we see the positives, but we certainly see the things that now we feel we can continue to work on and be better with. It's funny because you were saying that TFC could have could have lost that game towards mm -hmm. the end of the match especially but Bob Bradley sees it a bit differently he sees that there were three points for the taking for the TFC that ended up doing that but yeah I don't, I don't know I, I probably would say that San Jose a draw was a fair result but I'd say San Jose I think probably deserved to win the game mm -hmm. overall but I do agree that potentially TFC could have stolen three points as well yeah there were back and forth for sure I mean I think Listen, if you can take the positive that TSC are taking and say we got a draw, we got a point, no mm -hmm. goals conceded, 
fine, take it. Honestly, this match was really like not the match that I was thinking they're going to go out and hammer. There's too many players missing. Yeah. So I think with that in mind, fine. Fine. Move Solid to the point. Ne- yeah, yeah, exactly. Move Come to the next Come back home. Game. Exactly. Exactly. Right time zone, everything. But yeah, uh, you brought up Jaquil already. And you, like you mentioned, his first start for Toronto FC mm-hmm. this season. Jaquil and already, he's a guy who everyone around Toronto FC knows, despite the fact he's only 18 years old. He's obviously had links and ties to Liverpool, Club Brugge. Like, there's been a lot of pressure on Jaquil. And last season while he started the year in a positive way he got injured and then by the time he gets he recovers and comes through in the door comes Richie Larea mm-hmm. and you're not going to displace Richie Larea from TFC starting 11 if you're 18 year old Jaquil Marcioretti so it hasn't been easy and I think the way that the rest of last season played out wasn't a positive in terms of helping increase his value and helping just him develop as a player but now you see sort of the you see over the off season that he's made strides and it seems like he's kind of hit the reset button here, but let's hear what Bob Bradley had to say about Jaquil Marcioretti's performance after the match. I'm happy for Jaquil. Uh, I think that uh, in this last stretch, his mentality every day has been very good. Uh, I think he's had a really good, uh, his way of training every day, the way he comes in, um, he's doing more in the gym. I think his concentration from the beginning of training till the end of training has gone up. So all the things that we spoke about at the end of last year, uh, even though he hadn't gotten an opportunity until tonight, we've told him over and over that, that we've seen a lot of these things going in a good direction. So it's it's great to see him get on the field and play well. Yeah, so one of the things he touched on there was he was – he spoke to Jaquil about doing all the right things off the pitch and doing all the right things when it comes to training. Even though he's not getting minutes here, he's telling Jaquil that he's doing stuff right. Mm-hmm. And I think last season what you saw and what we've heard is that, you know, maybe there were times during training that he was tuned off a little bit and didn't give 100% because maybe there's some frustration there that he's not getting the playing time. Maybe that just comes with, you know, the the profile that they've built up. Sure. Listen, people have labeled Jaquil fairly unfairly the next Alfonso Davies. Mm-hmm. And that's a tough thing for a 17 year old, 16 year old, now 18 year old to wear and shoulder. Um, I think a lot of that hype and buzz has, in a sense, worn off because of the way last season played out. And I actually think that's a positive for Jaquil. Sure. And I think, you know, that pressure is off him a little bit, at least in market. Mm hmm. What I need to see now is I need to see TFC do a better job of getting this kid minutes yeah. and getting him set up to play in a, in a system that actually could help him succeed. Last year, it was all kids, and it wasn't necessarily a structured system. But now when you're coming in, you're playing next to a Matt Hedges, you're playing next to Sigurd Rostad, you have Bernadeski in front of you, you have Michael Bradley and Brandon Cervania and Jonathan Osorio and Mark Anthony K. It's so much easier for a young player to slot in and succeed in the system. So whether it's at right back, whether it's at right wing, whether it's somewhere in the center of the park, find a way to get Jaquil Marshall ready minutes this year because he's showing, at least at the start of it, that that potential is still very much there for him to be an excellent, excellent footballer. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, we saw a lot of kids on the pitch, though, on uh, Saturday. Marshall Ruddy, Cozy Thompson, Kobe Franklin, and, of course, Alonso Coelho from Madrid. Is that how you pronounce it? It's Spanish. Alonso Coelho, right? Yeah, it is, but his last name actually looks way more Portuguese to me, Ooh. if I'm being honest with you. Yeah, but he's from Madrid. He's from Madrid. But I'm, I'm looking at it because they have a C... O E L H O Coelho. Oh, uh, okay. I, I don't know. I've, ne- I've never seen this, but he's from Madrid, so I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, comes up through the ranks as a kid with Atletico Madrid, playing until about like 11, and then he actually played with Rayo Vallecano. Mm-hmm. And then he comes over to what, Florida for uni in for the school. States, yeah. and uh, now at TFC. I mean, it's a it's he's an interesting one because when I was like looking into like where he's coming I'm like oh a Spanish kid and yeah. you know he still ended up going to uni in the states which is like okay you know clearly he wasn't that good then to play in Spain or play in those you know it's it's not a natural move for a Spanish footballer to then right. go to school in the states right but I mean 
I, I feel like he has a lot of versatility because he's played in such different levels in different countries. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, he comes over with a higher pedigree than mm -hmm. most uh, MLS Next Pro kids, right? And I think Alonzo in particular, he, what, 23 years old, so he's a little bit older than mm -hmm. an MLS Next Pro kid. And I think the only reason why we haven't seen him sooner for Toronto FC is because he is Spanish and he isn't necessarily classified as a homegrown prospect. So I think there are rules when it comes to calling up people from MLS Next Pro that is is that you have to be classified as a domestic homegrown player in order to be called up. So I believe either A, those rules have changed or Alonzo is now classified as sort of the domestic prospect. So now you're going to start seeing him uh, integrated more with the first team uh, when they do need it. So it is a good option for Bob Bradley to have. And <laughs> yeah, like... He, like I said, 23 years old, he's been training with Toronto FC for the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. He's been at training session. He trains with the first team. He's a guy the club knows very well. And I think you, you mentioned the Spanish behind him. When you insert guys like alongside him, like Michael Bradley, like Victor Vasquez, mm -hmm. that brings out the best kind of game in Alonso because he can play that style of football. He's a smart player, and Bob Bradley said this. Let's hear what actually what he had to say after the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Alonzo's a solid player. He played with us throughout preseason. Uh, he's smart, uh, and and you know when you when you have good football around him, he understands how to play with good players, how to keep it simple. So I thought he did a good job. Yeah, sure and sweet. When you you have good players around him, he understands how to play good football. He's got the the Spanish in him, and he is a. Uh, He's a classic kind of central midfielder that I, I would suggest that it's almost easier for him to play at this level yeah. with good players than it is for him to play at MLS Next Pro where you know not a lot of players have the soccer IQ that I think the first team has. For sure. No, honestly, as I said, I didn't think the match was that great in terms of entertainment value, but we did see a lot of kids get on the pitch. That's really important for a TFC side that has obtained a lot of injuries early in the season. Up next, TFC are facing Charlotte back at home. Charlotte are 14th in the table. TFC should beat them because they are playing Nashville, Atlanta, and Philly in their following next three games. But Mikey and I will break down that Charlotte match closer to, so keep your eyes open for that.